Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology, and we are back with Ryan. We are discussing on the chakras. So the last two chakras are remaining. This is part three. So if you have not watched the part one and part two, then please go and watch it. Okay. So please enlighten us on the okay. last two chakras. Yes, thank you. And it's good to be here again. Um, so we've discussed in review that uh, Capricorn and Aquarius rule over the first chakra, and that's related to Saturn. Uh, Pisces and Sagittarius is the second chakra related to Jupiter. Um, Aries and Scorpio is the third chakra to Mars. And then Venus is related to Taurus and Libra. And so the final two chakras that we need to consider is the throat chakra and the, the spiritual eye or the sixth chakra. Um, the, the throat chakra is related to Mercury, which is Virgo and um, Virgo and Gemini. And the um, sixth chakra is shared. It, it's related to Cancer and Leo, which is related to uh, the sun and the moon. Now, sometimes people ask me, but what about the seventh chakra? And the reason we don't have uh, a representation of the seventh chakra um, in, in the, the zodiac is because, to be fair, and from an astrological and, and, and yogic standpoint, the seventh chakra is, is said to be beyond karma. And so the zodiac itself is all about our, our individualized karmas. That's why we don't have one for the seventh chakra. Um, and you, you brought up a very good point, and I believe it was the, the previous video that we discussed. You talked about, um, for example, if someone has difficulty with, uh, say, the, the Libra and Taurus, which is the heart chakra, that they might have issues within this area. Um, and I do want to say, just to reconfirm that, that whenever I'm doing something like uh, health astrology, I will often look to see, well, where are their cruel planets such as Mars and Saturn, and are they doing well or not, to give me a, an, an insight into what part of the body might have difficulties. Mm -hmm. I don't just do it for uh, planets being in those those signs. I also do it for uh, what we call Rashi aspects, which we discussed previously. So, for example, if you get Mars and Saturn um, in Sagittarius, Pisces, Gemini, or Virgo, well, those four signs, they all Rashi or sign aspect each other. So if I see these two cruel planets within those four signs, I know that there's in innately probably going to be some kind of difficulty with the, the, the throat chakra as well as the, the second chakra. And I go a little deeper to figure out based on some other um, formulas, but that is one very good way for people to start looking at uh, the potentials for health and disease and, and such by considering these chakras. So to get to the actual last two chakras, um, Virgo and Gemini. Now, uh, this is ruled over by Mercury. And what we've been doing is considering which planets do well or are exalted and are debilitated there. Well, in the throat chakra of Virgo, that side of Virgo, which is the, the negative polarity, um, we have Mercury exalted. Now, the throat chakra is all about communication. The throat chakra is about figuring out the best approach to life. Uh, Mercury is about managing things well. And this throat chakra occurs between the, the spiritual eye center and the heart center. It, it's right in the middle there. And so the reason we need to have a good Mercury and the reason Mercury does so well in this chakra is because Mercury has the ability to mediate between our divine inspiration related by the sixth chakra and that expression as uh, love or effective action in the fourth chakra. So Mercury is able to do that well. It's able to say, this is an effective way to live. Now, when we think about Venus being in this uh, throat chakra, Venus doesn't do so well. And why is that? Because Venus, while Venus does deal with wisdom and Venus in this throat chakra in Gemini or even in Virgo can give pleasant speech, can make one an artist or musician, um, give this ability to express even a poet. Um, Venus doesn't do too well here because Venus doesn't do well. Venus's job is not to make sure everything goes smoothly. Venus's job is not about managing everything. Venus's job is simply about nurturing others, caring for others, bringing intuitive insights, this idea of bringing more love into the world. And so Venus doesn't have the, the technical capacity to do that well. Um, when you get a person, maybe sometimes in these new age communities, which are just overflowing with devotion, 
and they're very kind, spiritual, loving people, but they can't keep their life together. They can't manage their, the, the, the daily affairs of their life. So they have a lot of problems. That's like Venus being. Fu that's like Venus functioning in this throat chakra. There's a lot of love. There's a lot of comfort, but there's not a lot of capacity to um, be successful in the day to day. And we have to be able to do that in order to have an effective life. Um, so Venus and Mercury, even though they're friends, um, in regards to how plants function together, uh, Mercury does better because of the role he naturally plays within this throat chakra. Venus doesn't do so well. But as we've been discussing with these avashtas. Even when, even when Venus is in uh, Virgo, even, when, even though it's debilitated there, Venus is still in the sign of a friend. So we always have to remember that. We can't jump to the conclusion that Venus is debilitated, so therefore all these negative things are going to happen. We have to remember that Venus is in the sign of a friend, which tells us that Venus has almost like a, a backup plan in that if Mercury is doing well, Mercury can still take care of that Venus. So if Mercury is in a good house, a good sign, has good support from other planets, that Venus can still function well because that Mercury can help out. Because Mercury, they say that when Mercury is good in a person's chart, everything in their chart is better. Because Mercury allows the individual to manage their life well, to manage this division between the, the higher aspect of themselves and the lower aspect of themselves. Now, when we think about Leo and Cancer, this is the sun and the moon. Now, there are two planets to consider specifically. Mars, which is debilitated uh, in the sixth chakra, particularly in the negative polarity, because Cancer is the negative polarity of the sixth chakra. Um, and then there's Jupiter, which is exalted. Jupiter is exalted in the sixth chakra. Now, why is this the case? Well, Jupiter is about uh, deep understanding um, Jupiter is about faith and well-being. Jupiter is about um, having the resources that we need, again, not to be greedy, but to realize that we are a part of this wholeness of life and what we need will be there when we need it. So Jupiter rules over this second chakra, which again deals with creativity, children, wealth, resources. And in, uh, in the Yoga Sutras, there is this idea uh, of brahmacharya, which is often said to, it's often associated with um, celibacy or, or not having children, not having sex and these sorts of things. But brahmacharya from a yogic perspective relates to dedicating all of your resources to a divine life. Now it doesn't mean you run off into the mountains and become a yogi. It means that you make your life, whatever you're doing, whatever your job is, whether it's an astrologer, an accountant, a doctor, a nurse, Making, making your life about divine, uh, divine living. And so to have that second chakra lore, Jupiter, exalted in the sixth is simply showing us that if we can take our life and if we can, we can practice brahmacharya such that everything that we do is dedicated to um, helping others, being charitable, spiritual realization <clears throat> or religious understanding, then we're living a very uh, sattvic healthy Jupiterian life. And I, I, can't, I can't stress that enough because too many people get caught up in the idea of being involved in spirituality and growing as being something away from the world. But Jupiter can function anywhere. But it's all about dedicating one's life to this higher purpose. But now Mars, Mars rules over the third chakra, which we know relates to our personal power and our personal personal will and our personal drive, which is good. We need that in this relative world. But when we take that drive of Mars and we try to stick it up here in the sixth chakra, where it's meant to have this clear, direct connection to what we would call divine living or inspired living, that's probably a better word, um, that causes a problem. Because then the person is confused about, is this divine inspiration or am I being selfish or can I really explore this area of my life? That's why when this, the sun has to go down to the third chakra, the third chakra can't come up to the can't come up to the sixth chakra. If you follow what I'm saying here, so with Mars, um, Jupiter is about seeing the bigger picture, and Mars is about dealing with specific problems. So Jupiter is exalted up here so that we can see that everything in our life has a purpose and a reason 
for this divine life, everything, all diseases, all problems, all successes, all failures, everything has a divine purpose. But when we get Mars up here, Mars is about fixing problems, making things better. So Mars is not about surrender. Mars is about making things happen. That's why Mars doesn't necessarily always function so well uh, in cancer, uh, in that negative polarity of the uh, sixth chakra. But then when we take the the second chakra ruler, which is Jupiter, we stick it up here, uh, theoretically, the person does tend to live what you might consider to be a more graceful or, in a sense, divinely inspired life. So that's one way that we can think about these things. Does this make sense what I'm trying to share here? Yes, yes. And uh, what would you say about Sun or Leo? Because I think that's also part. Yeah, yes, that's very good. So, for example, Mars might not do too well in the sign of Cancer, but Mars actually does do well in the sign of Leo. And again, with the, the way we were talking about it as though um, that personal willpower uh, being up here in the sixth chakra doesn't quite work. Well, this takes us back to that idea that we discussed in the previous video, I think, um, of how the zodiac is based on these chakras and not uh, not the seasons. Because when we when we get when we get to Cancer, that's when the sun is uh, that's when the sun is as close to the north pole as possible. But when we get to Leo the sun has already started to go back down. It's already started to go back down towards the South Pole. And so by having Mars, this is theoretical, of course, by having Mars and Leo, then we have that divine inspiration, that divine energy heading back down towards the material world where Mars actually does well. So this is why Mars can still do well in Leo, um, but not necessarily in Cancer, because at Cancer, we don't want to have that mist or that confusion of the, that small personal ego self. But when it's moving down through Leo, again, the sun starts to move. Um, this is how we figure out what the zodiac signs are. The sun starts to move downwards towards the, um, the South Pole. Well, then that will, that divine will that Mars represents, such as Narasimha or uh, Hanuman, uh, this is bringing it back down in the world, which is where Mars functions best, which is why Mars is exalted in that first chakra, because he's gone all the way back down to where he functions well, which is survival and overcoming the odds. Th does it make sense what I'm trying to say here about? Yeah, perfectly. Okay, okay, because it took me a while to figure it out myself, so I don't know if I'm describing it <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the, by this we can also study conjunctions, because they say now there's something called as niche bhanga, if like Jupiter and Mars are in Cancer or in Capricorn, so... Yes, then we can see that way also, that one planet is helping the other. Exactly. And that's, we have to remember there are certain rules in astrology, which, um, like, for example, there's two of them I was trying to think of. Uh, the the Nietzsche Bunga, which you mentioned, uh, there's another rule that says uh, cruel planets owning, uh, owning angles do better. Well, they do better if they own angles and trines. Not if they're owning, uh, not if they're owning, say, um, a more difficult house and an angle. So we have these rules, and what what you just pointed out there about plants helping each other. The the, the reverse, uh, the the reverse yoga is the cancellation of debilitation. They tend to actually work out better if, like you described, you've got Mars debilitated in Cancer, but Jupiter is there exalted because the power of that Jupiter can really lift up that Mars. Um, some of the other some of the other combinations don't always play out in practice. It's 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 those planetary combinations that tend to do the most in that regard. Mm -hmm. Fantastic! This yeah. was like totally new, and <laughs> I never heard that chakras. And and one last question I want to ask you here is like they say that that when you are meditating, you are you are the kundalini energy is going up slowly, slowly. So right. can you? say like this that suppose the energy has been developed to a very high higher level of chakra then it's like saying suppose it has reached to the fourth level so automatically the he the problems which he might face related to venus which is the fourth chakra those things may uh, reduce and right and and that is the that is, that is the ultimate Remember, astrology, it, it's, it's fun to be able to predict dates and times and so on, but astrology in its purest sense is about helping us get perspective on our karma. Yes. And so, like you mentioned, 
when you meditate, the idea of the Kundalini rises, well, again, that's like bringing your awareness up through that inner zodiac. And so the more you meditate, the more you become aware of those, those problems that you have based on where the planets are. And the more you become aware of it, it's almost like they get bleached by the sun. They become less intense, which is why people who meditate more, while they still might have anger issues, they're not the same kind of anger issues that people who don't meditate. Because by, by circulating that life force through the spine, they have brought awareness to those problems. And so the problems can potentially become less triggers because that's what your karmas are. They're triggers, which means that if you have Mars and Saturn in the third chakra, and you have anger and aggression issues. Um, and so someone comes to you and maybe you're driving down the road and they cut you off. You go, you get mad and you have road rage. Well, that's one experience. Or if you're a regular meditator and you know you've got this problem, well, someone might cut you off, but because you've been meditating, because you've been bringing awareness through this area where the, the karmas are stored, you might get mad for a minute, but it fades much quicker. So that's why the meditation is so important because it helps you be more conscious of what's going on internally and not to perpetuate the problems that your birth chart, uh, what's the word, represents, I, I would say. Yeah, it's like you don't react, you respond properly. Exactly. Very good. Reaction or re response versus reaction. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you very much. And any other announcements you would like to make? You were saying regarding one of your courses. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, well, a lot of this stuff that we just discussed is in, it's part of an astrology apprenticeship course uh, that I run. It's a four-year course through ashevillevedicastrology.com where we go through the signs and the houses and we break it down pretty well. So most of my time is actually spent um, working with these apprenticeship course students. And we discussed early on that why I do do sessions, I have an extremely long wait list and it's very hard for me to even get back to you because of all the, the work I do with the astrological apprentices. So I would say, if you're interested in learning about astrology, um, you can go to astrovedicastrology.com and uh, look at the astrological apprenticeship course, it's a four year course, or um, there is a free 52 video course on YouTube, um, youtube.com slash Ryan's Vedic Astrology, where you can also learn more about astrology. So my, my role mainly in these past few years have been more on teaching than actually doing um, so many sessions. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you very much. I will pin the link to your YouTube channel and your website in the description. Whoever wants some more information, they can always go there. Thank you. And I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you. So thank you for inviting me. Yeah, the pleasure is mine. Okay, thank you very much. Namaste. We'll see you soon again. You too.